and House Republicans have voted to hold Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress. This after he refused to turn over recordings related to an investigation into President Biden's handling of classified documents. The audio tape contains Biden's interview with then special counsel Robert Herr, who conducted the investigation but later decided not to pursue charges. The 216 to 207 vote is the result of House GOP's months-long efforts to unveil the classified materials. Ohio Congressman Dave Joyce is the only Republican who voted against it. House Speaker Mike Johnson will now certify the report to the U.S. Attorney for D.C. The, certi the certification will then require the U.S. Attorney to bring the case before the grand jury. The DOJ will also make its own decisions for prosecuting. In the United States, expanding sanctions on Russia to stop countries like China from sustaining Russia's war machine. This comes as President Biden heads to Italy for the G7 summit, where he'll ramp up pressure on China's unfair trade practices. NCD's Iris Tao has more from Bari, Italy. President Biden is now landed here in Italy, where he will talk with G7 leaders about ramping up pressure on China and Russia. And right before the summit here tomorrow, the U.S. Treasury Department announced a slew of new sanctions aimed at stopping countries like China from supplying Russia with equipment and materials used in the war against Ukraine. Here's the White House detailing those sanctions. Watch. We have also been clear with the PRC that we reserve the right to take action against particular companies and entities that we are, believe are engaged in supporting Russia's war machine through the provision of inputs, whether it's industrial materials or microelectronics or UAV parts or whatever it may be. And we have put our money where our mouth is. Beijing has been ramping up its support for Moscow, including by selling it dual-use computer chips made using U.S. technology. Wednesday's actions widened existing sanctions to target those goods. In addition to China's support for Russia, G7 leaders here will also address China's unfair trade practices. And on Ukraine, Biden is set to meet with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky on Thursday and sign a new security agreement to pledge America's long-term support to the country. Making clear our support will last long into the future and pledging continued cooperation, particularly in the defense and security space. Another focus here among G7 leaders is to discuss sending Ukraine a massive loan using profits generated by frozen Russian assets. President Biden will also use this opportunity to amplify his view that America needs to stand with allies and bolster democracy, a theme key to his 2024 campaign. Reporting in Bari, Italy, Iris Tau, NTD News. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken today heavily criticizing Hamas for proposing numerous changes to a ceasefire deal backed by the United Nations. He said the terrorist group could end the war simply by agreeing to this proposal. Ultimately, it may not be the path that Hamas wants to pursue, but Hamas cannot and will not be allowed to decide the future for this region and its people. The resolution was adopted by the UN Security Council on Monday demanding for a temporary ceasefire in Gaza to allow a hostage prisoner swap between the two sides. Speaking at a joint press conference with the Qatari prime minister, Blinken said some of the changes Hamas proposed were workable, while others were not. Today's meeting marks Blinken's eighth trip to the Middle East since the Israel-Hamas war broke out. Tuesday's primary results could be a glimpse into how voters view the chain of power within the GOP. And two key swing state races reveal whom Democrat incumbents are facing to hold on to their seats. And today's Melina Wisecup has the latest on some of the key races this week. Amid a split within the GOP over candidate preferences, voters in several states have shown that they prefer Trump-backed candidates over others. Showcasing this are the recent results from South Carolina's primaries. Both Trump-backed incumbents Nancy Mace and William Timmons won their primaries, while their opponents were backed by other Republicans. Even millions of campaign dollars from former Speaker Kevin McCarthy's PAC failed to make a dent. Mace won by a landslide, 58 percent to 29 percent. And in the swing state of Nevada, a last-minute Trump endorsement led Sam Brown to victory with a huge margin, 57 to 17 percent. Now he's tasked with trying to take back Nevada Senate seat, which Democrat incumbent Jackie Rosen flipped blue in 2018. Similarly, Republicans are trying to take three Nevada House seats that are currently held by Democrats. Now Democrat incumbent Stephen Horsford, Susie Lee, and Dina Titus know their Republican challengers. All three races are rated as likely Democratic.
And Ohio voters just gave House Republicans a win, choosing Michael Rooley to fill a vacant seat. This means now that Republicans in the House have just regained a seat, giving them some cushion to their razor-thin majority. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Melina Weiskopf, NTD News. Another key race we're watching is the House Democratic primary in New York's 16th district. A new poll showing Congressman Jamal Bowman is facing a strong challenge. This is a support mounts for Westchester County Executive George Latimer. According to an Emerson College survey, Latimer currently holds a 17 point lead over the incumbent Bowman, that margin growing even wider among voters over the age of 40. The two candidates differ on several issues, most notably the Israel Hamas war. While Bowman remains critical of Israel's handling of the war in Gaza, pro-Israel groups and donors largely favoring Latimer. But the New York congressman still does have support from progressive lawmakers such as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Cori Bush. And with President Biden now traveling abroad for the G7 summit, First Lady Jill Biden is spending the week reaching out to senior aged voters. The First Lady is slated to travel to several key battleground states, namely Wisconsin, Minnesota, Nevada and Arizona. Her events will feature activities like pickleball tournaments and bingo nights, to keep older voters engaged. The campaign is expected to touch on issues like Social Security and Medicare programs that older people rely on. Statistically, older adults are more likely to vote than other demographic groups in the U.S. And coming up, how have China's trade practices like dumping cheap products impacted the American people? Well, the recent responses from the U.S. and EU protect against China's trade abuses. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.